Hello. So today we're going to do vectors. Um, so this is section 1.3, um, where we will introduce uh, vectors and vector equations and sort of a way of algebraically working with vectors. So I have a definition of vector, um, which is sort of the more mathematical definition of how we will think about vectors uh, later on. I have what I put here as a better definition. And actually, I'm going to put better in quotes because actually, I think this is the better definition. Uh, but for the purposes of what we will be doing now, this is the definition of how we will think about vectors. So um, as we move forward, we will start to abstract the way we look at vectors. And instead of um, using this definition, we will start to sort of trend towards just thinking about vectors as a mathematical object. Um, what's cool about what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, these types of vectors, which are just ordered lists of numbers, uh, and look at all of the properties that they have, and then realize we can abstract those properties to other mathematical objects, and so that's where we get this definition. So for now, keep in the back of your head that um, in linear algebra, a vector is just a mathematical object that lives in something called a vector space. However, for the time being, the definition of vector we will actually be working with is this one. Um, and so we will say that a column vector, or just vector, is a matrix with one column. Um, and we can think of that also, if you prefer, as an ordered list of numbers. So types of vectors you might see, uh, you could see something like this. Uh, you could see something maybe this, or it could have a bunch of really weird numbers in it. Um, you might see something like that. So each of these can be thought of as matrices with just one column. Right? So uh, notice we can still sort of think of these as matrices. Um, or if you just want to think of them as lists of numbers, that's fine too. Uh, and then for any vector, the length of that vector uh, will just be the number of entries that vector has. So this is a vector of length 2, this is a vector of length 3, this is a vector of length 4. All right, so we have some, um, again, nice algebraic properties that uh, can be attached to vectors. So I want to go over some of them uh, here first. Uh, so the first thing I want to go over is vector equality and what it means for two vectors to be equal. And so there's a very important distinction that we'll go over here. Um, and I, I just want to uh, sort of state it, uh, talk about why you know, it will be important. Uh, but I think that most of the uh, sort of properties we'll introduce about vectors um, tend to be fairly intuitive. So we say that two vectors are equal if each corresponding entry is the same. And so the distinction I want to go over here So the vector 1, 2, 3, of course, is equal to the vector 1, 2, 3. Um, I think that's fairly straightforward. But the vector 1, 2, 3 is not equal to the vector 1, 3, 2. And so notice that even though each of these two vectors have the same entries, the order in which the entries appear matters. So it's not enough for the two vectors to have the same entries. Um, the entries in the order they appear must be the same. Um, otherwise, we say that those two vectors are not equal. All right, we also have vector addition. Um, I should also actually point out uh, that the 
vectors must also have uh, same length. And so notice for vector equality, I think that this requirement is mostly straightforward that like if the vectors don't have the same length, then the corresponding entries can't be the same. Uh, but in order to really compare any vectors algebraically, we're always going to be talking about vectors uh, that have the same length. Um, so if two vectors do not have the same length, then they are immediately not equal. Same with vector addition. Uh, we can add two vectors of the same length, but we cannot add vectors of different lengths. So two vectors of the same length can be added together. by adding their corresponding entries. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, I could take, for example, the vector 1, 2, 3, and add it to the vector 4, 7, 10. Um, and all I have to do is just sort of work my way horizontally across the equation. I'll get a new vector of length 3, and each of the entries in this new vector are just the entries of the two vectors that line up added together. So 1 plus 4 gives me 5, 2 plus 7 gives me 9, 3 plus 10 gives me 3. But, um, and this is where I think you have to be very careful, I couldn't do something like this. So if I was trying to add the vector 1, 2, and the vector of length 3, 4, 7, 10, I cannot add vectors that have different lengths. Um, generally, that won't come up. Like, I don't think the book will ever ask a question like that or, you know, just because it can't happen. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind, that uh, we can't algebraically work with vectors that have different lengths. All right, so... Um, at least for the moment, we don't have a notion of multiplying two vectors together. What we can do, however, is multiply a vector by something called a scalar. And a scalar is just a fancy word for, um, and I'm actually going to just say any number C, is just a fancy word for a number. Um, so, for example, c could equal 2, d could equal negative 1, d could equal pi. Uh, um, I think the reason we will use scalar here is to uh, specify that this is a real number that is probably being uh, you know, used in the context of uh, working with vectors. Um, you can also think of a scalar as something that is going to scale all of the entries of a vector, um, which is exactly the way we define scalar multiplication. So remembering that a scalar is just any real number, we will introduce our last vector operation for the time being, scalar multiplication. And we just define scalar multiplication to be the process of multiplying every entry, each entry of a vector, by a scalar C. So for example, if my scalar was 2 and my vector was 1, 2, uh, this would give me the vector 2, 4, 6. So I get, again, a new vector of length 3, where each entry has just been multiplied by 2. Um, alternatively, I could do you know, negative 1 times pi, 0, 2, uh, negative 1. And this would get me the vector negative pi, 0 times anything is still 0. Negative 2, 1. Um, so scalar multiplication, again, all we're doing, you can think of this as the process of scaling 
each entry of a vector in some way or another. Um, but again, I, I, I think I prefer to just think of it as multiplying each vector uh, by a real number. All right, so um, we will start to now work with vectors algebraically and work with algebraic expressions involving vectors, uh, which I will introduce in a second. But oftentimes, in order to um, sort of make the notation less cumbersome of having to write out each vector every time, uh, we will represent vectors with uh, variables. And so usually I'll use this notation to represent um, vectors. But the book uses um, boldface. So an important distinction here. So um, because we're eventually going to talk about you know, multiplying these vectors by constants, adding vectors together. And so it helps to just have some like uh, more compact notation for representing vectors when we work with them. So usually we'll use these variables with arrows over them to define vectors, right? So if I'm saying u is equal to this, this vector u represents the uh, ordered list of length 2, 2, 4. However, in your book, um, usually the book would represent this with a bold-faced u and a bold-faced v. Um, I wish I could do that on the board. However, it is difficult to write in boldface. And so usually on the board, uh, or if I'm writing something out, I will use a uh, variable with line over it. Uh, usually in uh, when typing or uh, in the book, you will see boldface. Uh, so those two types of notation will be used interchangeably when talking about vectors. All right, so using this notation, we can compute expressions like the following. So we can ask, um, well, we can so compute you know, negative 3 uh, u plus 4 times v. And so notice this would just be the vector negative 6, negative 12, plus negative 4, 12, and so this would equal the vector negative 10, 0. Um, and again, notice like when we start working with many vectors or start kind of working more abstractly, it will help to have this more compact notation to represent vectors when we are talking about them, uh, because eventually we will start talking about vectors of arbitrary length or of length n, and it's just easier to use um, variables than it is to write out a huge vector. All right. So we have also um, a way of writing down sort of the set of all vectors of a certain length. And this is denoted with the real number sign to the n notation. So uh, this is the set of all vectors of length n. Um, so whenever I write out, again, sort of fancy r to the n, this is just denoting the set of all vectors of length n. I think one of the things that confused me the most about when I was, I think, first learning linear algebra, I kept wanting to think this was like, you know, exponential notation. So just uh, be very, very vigilant about that. Remember, this is just representing the set of all vectors of length n. Uh, so for example, the set R3, we've actually worked with quite a bit at this point. Uh, R3 would contain the vectors 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 6, et cetera. All right, so like we just say R3 is the set containing all vectors of length 3. Um, R1, you could actually just associate with all of the standard real numbers. Um, and actually, I should put the set of all vectors of length n uh, with real number 
so normally in math, right, uh, this is the set of real numbers. And so we're sort of just abstracting this notation. And when I take r to the n, this is going to be the set of all lists of length n of real numbers. And so r1, you could sort of just associate with r. But r3 would be the set of all vectors of length 3 that contain real number entries. Um, so we're going to be working with uh, different uh, sets for different values of n. We're going to be working with you know, r3, r4, r5, r6, um, r. I claim that you worked with one specific uh, set of this nature uh, for most of your mathematical lives. And so you've actually seen quite a bit and worked with the set R2 quite a bit. Um, so let's just take two vectors in R2. U equals 1, 2 and v equals 3, 1. So the reason I say this is that you can actually think of these vectors as um, ordered pairs in the plane. So if this is my x, y axis, you can think of these as just points in the plane where my first coordinate represents the x coordinate and the second coordinate represents the y coordinate. And so notice I could graph u, which would be right here, and I could graph v right here. Um, so you could think of these as just points in the plane, right, where I've graphed u and v. Uh, you could also think of them as uh, order, or sorry, directed lines in the plane starting at. Um, the origin, right? So I could think of V as this directed line and U as this directed line in the plane where these lines start at the origin. And this would be sort of the more uh, traditional way of looking at vectors and imagining what vectors are. Um, so when looking at vectors like this, uh, we have some geometric interpretations for each of the operations we've introduced. Uh, so if I were to add u and v together, um, and I'm going to spell this word wrong, parallelogram, uh, the sum uv actually has a very nice property in the plane. Uh, so if u and v are vectors of length 2, so that would be vectors in the set R2, then the vector U plus V is the fourth vertex formed, or is the fourth vertex contained, we'll say. in the parallelogram defined by u, v, and the zero vector, which is just the ordered pair zero, zero. Um, and so, as we move forward, um, at some point I'll define this a little more formally, but if you see zero with a vector sign over it or bold spaced zero in your book, this is just meant to represent the vector with all zero entries. And so notice u I've graphed in the plane, v I've graphed in the plane, zero is just the origin. So u plus v now is equal to the vector 4, 3. And so if we graph this vector, we see that, in fact, we get the parallelogram formed with the fourth vector. Um, and so last thing, we can think of scalar multiplication 
in R2. Uh, just uh, outputs, we'll say, a new point or vector if, you're, if you prefer on the line defined by my original vector, which we'll just call it U. Um, so for example, let's say we did 2 times U. Or actually, let's do do B here just because it'll be a little easier to draw. Um, so let's say we were just left with the vector V in my plane, right, which is defined by this point in line. Imagine extending this line off this way and this way. Well, 2 times V is equal to the vector 6, 2. And so notice if I were to extend this line a little bit, the new vector I got 2 times v would actually also lie on this line. Similarly, negative 1 times v, uh, which is equal to the vector negative 3, 1, or negative 3, negative 1, would also lie on this same line defined by sort of imagining the extending v off into infinity in both directions. So you can think of scalar addition as sort of completing this parallelogram in R2, or sorry, vector addition. And you can think of scalar multiplication as just sort of scaling a vector in one direction or the other while preserving its um, direction, right? Or preserving sort of the, the line in the plane that that vector lies on. Um, especially keep in mind sort of the idea of like scaling the vector in one way or another as we will discuss that idea a little more geometrically later on. Um, so yeah, this completes our sort of introduction to vectors. Uh, we will continue on in this section in video two uh, with some more properties of vectors and uh, starting to learn more about uh, exactly how we can work with vectors and vector equations.